want to welcome you to the next episode of the Plugged In podcast. And today we have Artie Chang. Artie is the president and CEO of Pantera Networks. How are you today, Artie? Good. How are you? I'm good. In fact, when I used to live in America, I was only for like four months. So I used to always hear uh, if I was any better, I'd be twins. Now, I don't know if that's uh, a particular part of America or whether the whole of America knows that. But have you heard that phrase? I have actually not. That's the first time I've heard that phrase, but it's quite interesting. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And I, I, who who can believe that we're halfway through 2025? I mean, what the heck's going on? Well, let me tell you, we might be halfway through, but we've, we've had enough events in 2025 to fill a whole year, I think. That's true. Now, that is true. So, Artie, tell me about Pantera Networks. I, I always love to kind of find out a, a little bit of the backstory on the name, and I also like to always make sure that we understand from the get-go, what problem do you solve? Sure, Pantera Networks really gets its name from Pan, which is uh, you know going all, all over, and Terra all over the earth. So you know, communications is, is the, really the root of, of interaction of all human beings. And in the business world, communications is all about engaging one another. We talk about customer engagement, but really today customer engagement means engaging customers, your, your own employees, your partners, really everyone is, is, is a customer to you as a, as a person. So Pantera got its start um, years ago in, how, in basically addressing the problem of how to improve communications. And when Pantera started, there weren't uh, the so-called hosted uh, SaaS companies, really. They were, everybody had their own PBX. Everybody had their own voicemail system. It was all hardware on premise. And Pantera had one of the original thoughts of really moving all of this, these features and functions in, into cloud services. Um, and that's really where Pantera got its start. Um, we, we developed a product called Streams. Streams is a product that combines uh, communications, team collaborations, and content sharing. We're, we're pretty unique in combining those three services and delivering it in a full-blown multi-function, all-in-one uh, platform. So that's been our, our thesis from day one. Uh, we've survived COVID, we've survived macroeconomic conditions uh, that weren't favorable to our customers, and we're, we're continuing to flourish in really trying to deliver the best communication platform for companies to engage with their customers, their employees, and their partners. It's very interesting because, you know, we, we often associate AI a lot with automation, uh, but it's not just about automation, is it? It's also about enhancing that customer experience. So what, why do you feel like AI is no longer just about um, automation, but, but very much about enhancing what, what you're talking about? Well, yeah, it's really, I mean, what, what customers want is they want to be engaged. And what does customer engagement really mean in an AI world? What it really means is not just reactive communications by a company, but proactive communications. And it's not just proactive, but it's the ability to deliver to a customer accurate and relevant and concise and succinct information. So this starts every aspect of, of the interaction with that customer. Uh, in the old world, a customer would call in and be, they'd get here a busy signal. And so there, there would not be any action or proactive uh, uh, ad addressing by the company. Um, or they might be thrown into a call queue for 15 or 20 minutes. Um, in the AI world, they are gonna get immediately answered and um, AI with its large language model and content scraping can provide immediate information to that customer without uh, limitations of human resources 
or time zones or business hours, all those things start to, to melt away. So that's really what we mean about engaging the customer with AI um, enhanced tools. And, and, and it's about valuing that customer's time, mm. providing that relevant information proactively that's succinct and accurate. And what would you say, Artie, is the most notable transformation your clients may may experience within 30 days of switching to streams? I think it's it's just that. It's a better it's a better form of, of customer engagement. I think that the, the key thing that we try to bring is when people talk about customer engagement to, to date, they really are talking about a contact center experience. Mm. Contact center technology has had customer engagement uh, tools for a, f- a few years, but it's not really in, in law, uh, integrated into the day-to-day life of an employee. So we bring customer engaging tools through AI uh, powered features to everyday life, whether it's again, answering the call and routing uh, a caller, which could be a customer, could be a partner, could be another employee, um, immediately providing information proactively, um, summarizing meetings um, succinctly, uh, creating action items automatically. Um, we bring customer engagement to every aspect of business communications. And that's really what they'll start to see with our streams, our new product called streams.ai. Mm. And with streams.ai, is it any different from you know, traditional communication platforms? I think it's very different because it, it again, melds these AI tool sets into everyday communications. I'll give you a quick example. We have a video conferencing platform called Connect. And in that video platform, you know, you can obviously have video meetings with your customers and your customer base. You can be demoing, for example, your product. But what we've done to enhance customer engagement is, you might have a, a low level salesperson on the phone call and they're getting stuck or the customer is asking questions that are ab- above uh, the knowledge base of that particular employee. Our, our connect video conferencing system has a mode called uh, supervisory modes and it allows for one or more supervisors or higher end uh, people to silently listen in and see and view the meeting. They, they can't be seen by the customer, they can't be heard by the customer, but the agent can hear them and the agent can see them. And so they can be giving the agent real time information to again, proactively answer the, the customer's questions. And that really engages the customer better. It uses their time better. The agent doesn't have to say, I'll get back to you and, mm. and then wait time pinging back and forth. There's instantaneous real-time interaction through the use of the supervisory mode. So it sounds like, yeah, you found something that is very much standalone, maybe alongside things that are more recognized, but having that ability, yeah, to be able to listen, to be able to um, visualize as well and see uh, without a client knowing, but it being something that's actually of support and of interest, I think that's... uh, yeah, very fascinating. Yeah, it's all about respecting the customer or the caller's time and trying to provide information. And AI provides great tools to be able to do that. Absolutely. And I know, Artie, that you have a big heart as well to uh, really encourage and almost show a way forward for other entrepreneurial thought leaders and creatives. What would be one core belief or philosophy throughout your own journey that you hope will resonate with other founders or tech leaders listening to this particular episode? I think there, there's uh, one key uh, kind of philosophy that Pantera has used from day one that I've really used since the beginning of my career, actually. And that is, you know, how do you make a great decision? If, if you think about it, uh, people make hundreds, tens, and hundreds of decisions every day. And some are good decisions, some are bad decisions. Very few are great decisions. 
And so we have a philosophy of how to take a good decision and make it a great decision. And the answer to that is, is two part. Number one is you have to make a decision. So there's no paralysis by analysis. By making no decision, that by definition is a bad decision. But the second part is more nuanced, which is in order to create a great decision out of a good decision, you need to refine it over time. Keep refining it, keep listening, take inputs. And once you continue to refine it, you may even ch change direction completely. But by taking inputs over time and refining that decision, it will become a great decision. And that's a philosophy that we instill in every Pantera employee is make every decision drive it to be a great decision. So for me, it kind of very much sounds like, you know, if we're going to succeed and move forward, we need to be teachable and we need to be accountable uh, and we really need to embrace feedback rather than be afraid of being offended or, or being criticized. Right. Or being defensive. You know, I can't tell you my background is I started out as an engineer and engineers are very logical. Engineers uh, pride themselves, I think, in in uh, analyzing a situation and then making a decision and always being right. And but they have a harder time, I think, myself included early on in taking feedback, taking um, um, information and over time and adjusting and moving potentially that goalpost because sometimes new information like new competitive information may come in and you have to move that goalpost. If you leave it where it is, it, it will create a bad decision. Mm. And if, if a listener walks away with just one insight about vision, innovation or AI, RT, what do you believe would be the best thing or what would you hope for them to take away from this interview? One of my favorite words is listen. And I think, you know, as we as entrepreneurs, we're, we have two sides of ourselves. One is promoting, selling, um, being, being innovative. But in order to feed those characteristics or, or tasks, you have to be able to listen. You have to be able to truly listen and, and to filter out um, things that are appropriate when you're listening and still challenge. So I, I always tell our sales team, listen to the customer. That's, that's the one important aspect. Don't just sell. Don't sell 100% of the time. You need to listen to the customer, challenge the customer where appropriate, um, and then sell. But Listening, it all starts with listening. Mm. It's very good. Now, when it comes to AI, it's such a fast-paced industry, and it can be quite overwhelming. What would be your advice to entrepreneurs who are maybe feeling overwhelmed by the pace of AI? I think it goes back to that listening aspect, but also, you know, a lot of times we as entrepreneurs, we want to leapfrog. Mm. We want to we want to we want to jump over our competitors, and some sometimes that's appropriate. I think with AI, a lot of listening and a lot of uh, uh, organic growth. We don't have to just leapfrog. AI is so new, the technology is moving so fast that trying to leapfrog may put you in a position of picking the wrong AI branch mm. or the wrong kind of direction that AI is going, which is what we've done with our streams.ai is we're, we're not really intent on leapfrogging so much as we are intent on, on addressing real problems that our customers have um, and delivering real AI based solutions that solve problems. Don't just uh, bedazzle with technology. And what would you say is next for you, Artie, and for Pantera? Obviously, AI is always evolving. I, I, we see many businesses, uh, as soon as they lose relevance, then they, uh, they fall to the wayside. Obviously, AI is such a fast pace. How do you keep innovating? 
Well, again, I sound like a broken record, but we, <laughs> we continuously listen to our customers. Yep. We stay relevant with the, with the industry uh, prognosticators and industry analysts constantly. We're constantly getting feedback. We're constantly taking good decisions that we make in terms of our product direction and, and, and are constantly taking input to make them great decisions. I think an example of that is our Luna AI receptionist which uh, you know, starts out as a, a full-blown uh, conversational receptionist that companies can very easily and very simply implement and deploy on a location-by-location -location basis. And it does a fairly simple job, but it does it extremely well, which is always answer the call, provide relevant information instantaneously, never leave a, a, a caller hanging or frustrated, it even has sentiment analysis, and if it senses that a customer is getting frustrated or a caller is getting frustrated, it will automatically route them to a human uh, receptionist. So, you know, that's a very simple but powerful way for customers to save resources and be more customer engaging. In the future, we're going to take that to become, to evolve into not just a receptionist, but a full-blown user um, um, agent or user user uh, um, chatbot mm -hmm. uh, or receptionist for the user. And that's going to be more powerful on a user by user basis as well. So again, implementing AI and its many facets as we move forward to, to engage customers in a much more efficient and effective manner. One thing that's really refreshing is you're very customer first uh, driven and focused, which which I think is so wonderful because AI is so so kind of taken by the fact that people feel threatened or actually if you use it to the advantage, it can actually bring uh, an ease and a depth to to problems that we all experience. And I love the fact that you're always thinking of the customer. Artie, where do people find out more about you, Pantera, and maybe share one final thought as we bring this into land? Yeah, maybe even before that, I, I give one more example where we really use AI uh, to improve the customer experience. We, we listened to a lot of our customers and they all came back with some the same thought, which was the administration of these complex multi- functional services such as our streams.ai is, is complicated. It's not intuitive. It's confusing because there are just so many ways you can, you can build a system. And so we use AI to actually implement a, an administrative portal that is fully driven by AI. And so we can handle and build call flows with a drag and drop AI based user interface we, we have an AI-based chat bot that can answer, can, can conversationally interact and provide how-tos and, and, and structure. We even use AI to validate SMS um, uh, privacy policies on the, by scraping the user's website of their privacy policies. So by implementing an AI in the admin portal, and we're very unique in doing this compared to any of our competitors, we got a tremendous response from our customer base. So again, these are ways we stay relevant and we really implement AI in, in, in ways that customers feel are immediately beneficial to them. In terms of getting more information, certainly at our website, www.panteranetworks.com. Um, and, uh, we encourage people to go there. There are a lot of videos on our streams.ai system. Um, and we're happy to answer any questions and, and uh, help you, our customers engage their customers. That's excellent, Artie. I really enjoyed uh, this episode with you. It's been very informative and you've got great energy. And I love the fact that you've not just shared about your business and about Pantera, but have also given us some wisdom around a, a philosophy of, of listening, being teachable, being accountable. I, I love that stuff. It's really important. I think that we're inspired and encouraged by, by people like yourself as well. So thank you. I really appreciate the opportunity. Cheers, Artie. All right. Take care.